Hello everyone, how are you doing today? It is Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. I am so glad that you guys are here. I am Celine, the community manager, um, and I'm here with Melody. Hello everyone, it's me again, and nice to, nice to meet you all, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a lovely Wednesday, uh, pretty chill, and uh, I'm glad to be here again. <laughs> That sounds so wonderful, Melody. Where are you joining in from today? Uh, like uh, the topic I'm gonna share. So, no, like location wise, are you? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm based in uh, San Jose. So, like, uh, oh, we yeah. Have, um, yeah, we have like a nice building here. Like, uh, actually, I'm now in the San Jose office. Yeah, oh, can very see nice. the purple. Wall. I'm joining. <laughs> The LA office today. I love your purple wall. Um, everybody who's on the live, I want to know where you're joining in from. So please leave it in the comments. I saw Bruno and I know Bruno's from Brazil. So welcome everyone. I am glad that you're here. Do you have any fun weekend plans, Melody? Yeah, actually, uh, I'm gonna plan to go the like a uh, haunted house with my friend. You know, like a uh, Halloween is closed. Yeah, but we're still planning. Maybe just uh, watch a horror movie or something because Whoa. you know it's probably more. Really, yeah, so too much. Yeah, I absolutely adore Halloween. Um, last year, me and my boyfriend had matching um Halloween outfits, and we absolutely loved it. Oh, wow. Melody, last time you came on the live, I remember you had a very cute like um some spooky merch that you got from Disney, if I remember. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's a great suggestion. I probably should wear that like uh, when I go to there. Yeah, yeah. That's um for those of you who didn't tune into the last one, Melody came out and was it on the Rainbow Shadow template? Yeah, the Rainbow Shadow one. Yeah, yeah. and also with my Nintendo hat. Yeah. <laughs> visited the Nintendo world and she had all of the coolest merch and a t-shirt with like the blue characters on it so I thought that would be perfect for Halloween if you haven't already go check out that tutorial as well because it was so informative and I learned so much especially if you are like trying to learn material editor like I think that's a great template uh live to tune into so I see that more people are joining hi guys uh, Melody, did you want to show some like really cool examples about like what we will be covering on the live today? Uh, yeah, of course. So today uh, I'm going to share like uh, how to use our portal template. And uh, um, actually like uh, for this portal template, the reason why we made it because we got some like a request from our community side saying like, oh, can we make like some um, like a real world based like AR experience? And you know, like a portal door is kind of like a classic one. Yeah, so that's yeah. why we made it, yeah. That's fantastic. Um, I've always wanted to use like the back camera, not the front facing your face camera, but the back camera, because I think the real fun of AR is like when you look around and then it like totally transforms your environment. I think portal um, template is just the right one because you get to actually like step into it and kind of go in and that is so magical. Yeah, actually that is the first example when I entering the AR industry, yeah. <laughs> Really? Is that what one of the um, effects that you saw and you thought like, this is so cool. This is I want to do. Yeah, it yeah kind of like uh, like uh, uh, when I was doing my last job, like uh, uh, the classic like experience we had are most yeah. like the AR, like in the real world, you put something in the real world and you explore around. Yeah. <laughs> I think that is absolutely fantastic. Also a little sneak peek um, for our, our ambassadors, which is our top creators, we've offered target tracking. So you can actually oh, like, cool. um, scan like a logo or an image, and then you'll be able to track it with your phone as well. So that's another fun use of AR back camera that's coming very, very soon. So keep an eye on that and check out our ambassadors to see what kind of effects they've created. But I have some wonderful examples that I want to show you. And as always, um, Carol, who is our wonderful operator, is going to transition us. Look at this. This is mesmerizing. Look at the, um, the fish. It's running and roaming. I feel like, do you guys know about this hotel? My new effect, a stranger see, thing uh, portal. You see like the aquarium on the mirror? Mi nuevo filtro, un portal de Stranger Things.
booked myself Universal Horror Night so I can literally go see it in person. That's how dedicated fan I am. And I think she did a wow. fantastic job like bringing that to life. So that was one of my favorite effects as well. So and impressive. the third one, which one? The Melody. I absolutely love this one. It's by like the popular Japanese comic. I think it's called Doraemon. And this was created by our creator T Luck for you. I'm also going to put their name in the chat as well so you guys can go try out this wonderful effect but I'll let Melody speak for herself. Melody what do you think of this effect? Wow actually I mean uh, every time I go when I check like uh, the effects that have been generated or got inspired from our templates myself also get inspired you know for example the stranger things and also like uh, this uh, Doraemon as well as that fish one I just feel like, oh my God, how could they get the ideas there? And you know, the quality is also looks pretty good, you know? Yeah, yeah. I know. That makes me want to go inside there and check. Yeah, super cool. I think this is a super um, amazing effect because I know like Dora Hamon, like in the comic has the this magical door and he always like pulls out like gadgets that like transforms you into different reality or makes you go through walls or something crazy like that and this I feel like is just envisioning that so I absolutely love 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 this effect it's so cute yeah oh just to say one more thing like uh, so for this portal things because it's trying to transfer you to some like unusual world yeah so like uh, when you're trying to conceive like some ideas trying to think something like uh, unexpected or like uh, doesn't really happen in the real world mm -hmm. so yeah recently I've been thinking like oh maybe we can make like a like a hobbies you know like a the, the like a cute like a uh, people like a little bit short in the like uh, the Lord of the Ring in that movie like uh, people live in like a really cute house and that is House of the Hobbies and also <laughs> like, uh, yeah yeah and also I'm a fan of like uh, the artist Dali and uh, he made like some sculptures like a really um, how do you see that the strange and uh, all the creators with like the creatives there so I'm thinking maybe we can also try to like uh, make a portal door to the oh. You know, yeah. I think that's a fantastic idea. And I think one thing that you can also do is make sure that the world that you're putting in has a big contrast. That's mm -hmm. why I like Florentia's effect so much because as soon as you walk in, like it's all red and it's so different from reality that you can clearly tell that it's a portal. It would be kind of funny and um if you have like your exact background like people wouldn't really realize that's a portal but if you have something like the fish or the door i am on like once you walk in you feel like you're inside of a cartoon like it has a cartoonish render so that's one advice i have for you guys but without further ado melody take us away on this amazing tutorial okay yeah definitely because like uh i think today's content will be really exciting so let me just uh, share my screen and i think we can start Perfect. Okay. Uh, can everyone see my screen here? Yes, we can. And my if a house, our lovely if a house. Okay. So you know, like uh, we recently released three to zero vision. So that's why I'm uh, actually using this uh, latest vision to like a uh, demo how to use our portal template. Okay. So when you open it, uh, because you know we have like a lot of like uh, new templates released. And uh, I would suggest you go to the world category and Apollo should be the first one. Oh my God, my internet is a little bit poor, but okay, it's loaded here. So let's open this project. It's loading, loading, loading. Okay, great. So, okay, so when you open the project, um, sometimes like uh, I know people are, are like, uh, Staying the preview video with the face or full body something, but for this one because it's based uh, in the like a real environment, so we highly recommended you to switch your preview video to the uh, environment. And I think sofa or table probably the best one like uh, trying to preview your effect. Yeah, and let's keep it and uh, sofa preview video here. And uh, it's a similar things like uh, let's try to go through the structure of the portal. And uh, for the next top next part, I'm gonna like introduce uh, what part of the things we can try to modify or like uh, for the customization. 
Um, and uh, for the third part, I'm going to introduce some like uh, advanced but really exciting uh, new features there. Okay, cool. So uh, about the structure, if you go to see the hierarchy, this is the tips part and uh, our tips really help for, so you can like, uh, if you're missing this video or something, you can always go to the tips and they're trying to figure out how to play with the template. Um, okay. You can, you can full screen effect house. Oh, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. So next uh, is about the main part, the portal group here. So this is the camera. Uh, there's a little bit thing special about the camera is because we wanted to make it uh, the plan base and the tracking the real world. So that's why we assigned the device tracker to your camera. So every time, like if you wanted to make your effect based on the back camera, based on the real environment, trying to go to the add component and find the AR capability and find the device tracker here and then sign this like a component to your camera. So your effect will based on the real world. Yeah. And there are two modes of the tracking mode. So one is the world and one is orientation. Uh, just some like a simple explanation between these two modes. So for world, uh, so for world mode is actually like a detecting the uh, directions. Like, uh, for example, if you have a sphere, so it was like a detecting, like a, if the sphere is on front of your face, in front of your face, or is on left or right, it will like show the uh, direction. And moreover, with the, the world mode, it will also sensing the distance between your camera and uh, between the, like the virtual object in the real environment. But if you switch to orientation, it will just uh, like uh, sensing the uh, direction between your camera and the like uh, uh, your virtual objects there, but it went sensing the distance there. So because for this project, the portal door, we wanted people to hold the phone and like uh, really work into that real world. So that's why we need to sensing the distance between your camera and the virtual things. So that's why we use the, the world mode in here. But if you are trying to like uh, making really giant stuff, or like uh, floating things around you, which you don't really need to get closer or like far from it, uh, you can like uh, definitely try to use the, the orientation mode. So that is about the AR camera setting. And next part is about the content there. So you see, we have like a AR plan tracker. So this is the things we always making the object like a stick uh, like a, or like a detect the, the plan. Um, and show base, uh, show the use the plan as the anchor and show the objects based on the plan. And in here, this is the, the plan tracker is the, the uh, component that does the, the things to detect the plan and then show up your uh, objects based on the plan there. And underneath it, we have like a portal world container. So this one is just a kind of like a, a package or like a a container, yeah, like trying to package the everything you wanted to show, um, like uh, inside this like a real environment, like or like a um, amount when it detected the AR plan, what you wanted to show. So we use a like a container to include everything there. So the good thing of doing that is you can just uh, simply like uh, move the container, and then everything be packed inside the container will be moved with it. So that is kind of like a, a good habit to organize your projects. Yeah. So that is the, the structure of the, the project. Oh, and inside the portal world container, um, I wanted to show you actually how we build this like a portal effect there. So, so we can disable the, there are three main parts. One is the occluder, one is the window frame, and the rest of the things are actually the objects or like uh, the things you wanted to show inside the portal. Okay, so if I disable occluder and the window frame, it just to show what it is or like the magic things behind the portal. <laughs> actually, no, you know, I say this on every live, but I think this is also a cool look because it looks like a magical floating ball or like a planet. Yeah. So if someone is going for that aesthetic, I think this could be an effect of itself. But 
continue. Yeah, actually, I think like people do love this effect as you described it. They just uh, disabled occluder and uh, you know trying to make like this uh, like a storyboard in there, floating storyboard. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait, Bella, so, does that mean that um, the if we set the occluder shape to something else, it doesn't have to look like a circle. We can make it into a star shape, or we can make it into a box, or even like some crazy shape like seashell. Exactly. Actually, like if you want to change the occluder shape, you can just uh, like uh, choosing the different shape uh, or the different mesh mm. uh, occluder there. Yeah. So for example, if you can make like a head shape occluder, oh. I think it be a little bit like a smaller, but I mean like a, if it is like a big enough, let's see. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think the scale probably be different. Let's see. Yeah, but like if you change the shape, if you want to change the shape, you can just like replace the, the mesh of it. Let me change it back. But the thing is, the tip of this one is we are using this special like a uh, uh, occluder shape because what? I just tap so many zeros in there. <laughs> we see that Projo AR filters is in our chat and Swimknot as well. Hi, Swimknot. So nice to see you. Scion is also in our TikTok chat. Hi, guys. Thank you for joining. Look at how cool this project looks like. When you've selected, it kind of looks like an iris, like an eyeball, too. <laughs> Yeah, we especially like making this sphere. Actually, it's just a yeah. sphere and we cut out, we cut out the hole so we can look inside of that. Yeah, that is the magic thing. That is very cool. Wait, I this is another crazy idea, but that like iris looking shaped inspired me. Maybe we can connect it, uh, use that model, but use it in the front facing camera so you can have like an eye and if you look into it, it has oh that's awesome actually you can attach it with your eye part right oh and, and then with your move and your instructor moves with you oh my god that's a great yeah, idea. idea yeah, yeah let's definitely try that it's just like a look into the eyes and you see there's something <laughs> inside oh my god you're genius that's a great idea yeah. On the TikTok live, we also have Try On Effects, aka Chin Yu, who is our technical community manager. Say hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Ooh, we have a first question on the chat. Melody, do you think you can answer a question or should we delay it until the end? Uh, is that related to this part or like? A, oh, I'll or compile all of the questions and we'll answer it at the end. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so maybe, yeah, we can just uh, quickly go through the contents here and then I can try to answer the questions uh, at a time. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so that is the magic things. We actually just uh, created this special sphere and cut out a hole in front to make like a, a door so people can look inside what is actually inside of this like a sphere container. That is the magic things. But I mean, after I explain, it's probably not that magic, but yeah, that is how we set it to the trick part thing there. So, okay. So like uh, when you do the portal, uh, the steps could be here could be, you just uh, like um, uh, create it like, or changing the uh, sphere texture. So for here, we are making like a starry night or like uh, you can try to change it with like uh, some, um, desert uh, environment texture or like uh, some like undersea stuff, you know, trying to like uh, replace the texture there. Or like uh, uh, inside the sphere, you can try to add some like unusual things. For example, the stranger, like the monster you just saw, or like uh, some 3D models, like uh, some butterflies or something like fly out of this portal effect. Yeah, something magic. You just uh, need to put them inside this like a portal world container and trying to combine them and arrange them together. Okay, so the last part is about the window frame. 
uh, actually it's just kind of like a decoration things because if you just look inside it, you probably feel like mm, we probably miss something. It, just, let's just add something to make it like a more perfect, add like a door frame there, you know. So in here we are making like this door frame, uh, like a window frame actually. It's uh, generally, it's just a plan and uh, we designed this 2D texture. So which will make it easier for you to replace it. And uh, I think you see this is the, the frame material. And if you go to the frame material and uh, you can simply like uh, changing with other like a door texture. And here we prepare like another circle frame for you. So you can just uh, change the, the texture there and uh, scale the, the size to uh, make it matching like a uh, matching the whole. Otherwise people will like uh, figure out like, uh, oh, this is how the magic works. Yeah. So <laughs> trying to like uh, scale it like to matching and cover the, the, the whole size there. Yeah. So that is the structure of the portal effect. Uh, probably we can ask, uh, we can answer some questions. And for next part, I'm going to show you how to like adding the contents there and some like advanced things about our material instance. Yeah. Um, we answered the question on the chat. It was about, can you release an effect in a certain region? Um, all of our effects are at the moment global, but if you want this feature, feel free to add it in the forum, but I think we can continue with our tutorial, Melody. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So next part is about like, uh, for example, if you have some ideas how to use this and replace some contents in this portal world. Um, so when we do this, our first like uh, uh, trying to disable our AR camera there. So that's will be easier for me to uh, like uh, take a look of what happened here. So it's always like on the screen space there. And uh, yeah, and uh, let's try to disable the occluder so I can know the sense the dimension of the 3D world. Okay. Uh, the simplest way to do that is just uh, like um, adding like a 3D object there, or you can make your own 3D object. For here, I prepared like uh, some floating sphere. Uh, let me see. If anybody has any recommendations on what kind of portal effects people should create, put it in the comment. Personally, I love um, when like the uh, it's spring and all of the sakura like leaves are falling and the world is like in pink and there's flower petals. I would love that. But now that it's fall, I'm starting to feel like I want to feel I want to see like um, fall foliage. So everything is like red, orange and brown. And there's a floating pumpkin spice latte. I think that would be fun as well. <laughs> OK, cool. So now I'm just adding like a, a hat with the rock material. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> just to show like uh, how quickly we can like uh, uh, implemented some like models in there. This is the quickest way. Like uh, we have the building like uh, a head model and uh, like uh, you can try to adding some like, uh, um, how do you say that weird texture in there. Mm -hmm. And also I want to introduce like uh, for our asset library, our coworkers trying to implement it like some really common used uh, materials. Mm -hmm. For example, in here, like a fur or like a bubble things. Let's try the fur. I always want to try the fur. Okay, let's do like a pink fur and apply it to our head and see what happens here. <laughs> wow, okay. Oh. So now we have like a fur, like a human head, weird head in this. Oh my like, gosh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, like uh, you can try to do some interactions to the position there, like a uh, really simple things like a uh, transit uh, by time. This is the node. Um, I know you must know it better than me. Uh, just uh, trying to simply set an interaction so you can control the, the uh, position, maybe to make it move uh, upside down there. So let's do the vertex. So 
were vec vector three, and uh, we can make it from the current position to like uh, upside down. It would be uh, let me see, like a uh, seventy, and the uh, loop like uh, forever, and the duration could be one seconds. Uh, this is the day number here. Okay, so now you have like a floating head and let's make it a ping pong. So it's actually like a floating like a infinitely. So now you have like a, a floating things there. Okay, so this is a quick way like a how to do your um, like animation with the, some building like a 3D model there. And also you can fake your um, animation with your like a, a 3D model in some other tool like C4D or like a Blender things. And here we have like a sphere with some animation model here. We can try to import inside in here. Uh, and uh, let's just uh, make it mapping the sphere really into the world. So while Melody's moving all the spheres in our YouTube chat, Projo AR filter says, imagine entering a portal and the head starts talking. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah. Like you can pre reload like a, a pre record some audio or something. And when it entering, it will trigger the things happened. Like a trigger it like a talking or something. Oh my yeah. gosh. Good idea. Yeah. So yeah, so I already introduced like uh, two ways to um, kind of customize the contents inside there. So first uh, using the uh, 3D model and trying to set some interactions, use our visual scripting. And the second is import uh, your customized 3D model with the baked uh, animation in there. So you don't need to like, uh, um, like control it through visual scripting. And another thing I wanted to introduce so that is the kind of like the uh, new feature recently we have. And uh, so you see, actually, we have the, the sphere, right? And um, um, you need to like uh, create uh, several different spheres and animating them uh, like a uh, frame by frame. But now we have something pretty cool. It's called like a material instance. I really wanted to introduce this because I have so much fun with it. OK. So for example, uh, like uh, we create like a material, use the, the material editor here. And actually not only for material editor, this, this like a material, but for every material, if you go to the render states, you have like a parameter called like instance count. So which means it will trying to make instance or the copies of this material, uh, like uh, with this number here. And the magic things about it is for example, if I just wanted to make 10 or like 20 instance of this material and uh, let's try to do something. So um, I can use the every instance ID and uh, trying to do some like a mapping there. Uh, let me see how can we do that. So what I'm doing now is for every material, it have its own ID. And I'm trying to create like a random position for each of the material. So you can see the effect there. But just uh, oh, wait one second. Let me try to implement the things there. Uh, OK. So that's how we make like uh, this new position there. And uh, uh, let's use the, the multiply there and uh, trying to add it with the, the original attribute position. And then to the transform to the material. While Melody is working on this material on the YouTube chat, Tree Luhan um, had a really awesome idea. This is, they said this could be a nice effect for a band. Um, 
like imagine being able to scan a album cover and being able to like walk through it because it's a portal. That is such a fantastic idea. I think if let's say I could walk through a Taylor Swift album and you see like a 3D model of her and then inside are different eras. So depending on like where you're tilting your phone, you get to see all of these different eras. That is something I want to experience. <laughs> Cool, cool. I hear you. We want to make a band. Okay, that's it. Because I'm focusing on this like uh, no setting things. Yeah, but I mean, so you see, actually, we already have something here. You see, it's kind of like uh, we're trying to. The notes here I'm doing is trying to find like uh, make a random X position for these twenty like uh, uh, sphere materials. And you see, it's already like a for uh, because I just add for the X dimensions. So you, you can see the position here. It's already on the x, uh, axis. Is there some random position? And uh, if I like apply to the y position there, uh, so it will like uh, make it like a, a two D dimension in there. You see? So we just a fast create like a, a group of like a sphere. Wow. Yeah. Um, so the difference between just copy and pasting your um, object versus instancing. Can you tell us a little bit more? So actually, like for instancing, it's trying to make a copy of the material. And uh, it compared to the traditional way, like, uh, for example, you have a sphere and you just uh, duplicate the sphere. You actually like uh, have uh, um, several different thing objects there, right? Mm -hmm. but because sometimes we're trying to save the like the performance to optimize the performance or we are trying to like um, uh, control them as a group you know so we can just use one material but with the one material it has the, all the copies there that's mm -hmm. what we call instance. so instead of like a copy the same object we are making copy of the material and for each material we're trying to control like uh, the position of it uh, the color of it. So that will be much more easier to do that. Yeah. This is uh, it really good, guys, because I know you guys are always complaining about the five megabyte limit. And like, I want to add a lot of like um, objects there without um, going past the five megabyte limit. This is a great way because if you are instancing, it only counts um, the megabytes. It only counts as one object, even though you have a thousand instances. So that is um, an awesome way to add a lot of different variants um, of the object in your thing. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I'm just to quickly show you like how to for this part is trying to like pick a random position for each like a uh, material. So you can see it quickly like generated like a, a group of 20 spheres with the random position there. And uh, you can like uh, tweak the uh, gap between them. For example, if I wanted to expand it, they uh, along the, the x axis, I can just uh, like uh, uh, type in here to multiply the, the number of there. And another cool thing is, for example, now they all static, right? I can try to add some uh, like uh, interaction there. So for example, I wanted them to move along, maybe move just along the y axis. So what I can do is like uh, adding some like a motion in there with along with the time. Probably, let me see. Projo says um, material editor is the whole new world. And I do believe it because there's so many fun things that you can do. You can create a thousand instances of an object or you can procedurally generate something. So you are starting from scratch and you're only using visual scripting to create visuals or you can animate stuff. It is very, very fun. Yeah, exactly. One second. Let me just, uh, yeah. The thing is, 
sometimes you need to think really carefully where you want it to change the parameters there. Otherwise, it won't work. So <laughs> yeah, you need to change really carefully there. So let's see, we add the noise here. And OK, let me try to add it. We also have an example um, instance material project file. And for you guys who are in the live right now, we're, we're going to share it to you guys exclusively, OK? I'll put it on the Effect House um, live Discord channel. Um, it's within the big Effect House Discord server. There's just a channel that says, effect dash house dash lives and i'll put the project files there so the people who are attending the live can use that resource but don't don't go telling this is the privilege you get from being on the effect house live so go try it out guys okay cool oh the size change too yeah so in here like uh, if you want to change the size you can try to like uh, multiply some uh the, so X, Y, they means the scale on the different dimensions, like, uh, or you can just uh, scale it up. So this is the part trying to apply the, the scale. And Mel, uh, what is your favorite thing to do with Material Editor? I want to know. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, actually, uh, I personally not like an expert in the Material Graph, so I'm also keep like learning the things here. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do that is every time, like uh, when you're not really sure about something, you explore and you find like something. Oh my God, it doesn't the, the effect I want, but it looks good. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so it's I just like keep learning. Talk you effect creation um there's been many times where i have a vision for an effect and i like try it but i don't get there but on the way i find out something interesting and i'm like i didn't mean to make this but i made it and it looks very cool <laughs> yeah yeah and things like okay i'm just uh, like uh publish it no matter yeah. <laughs> when people ask i'm like it. yes i definitely intentionally made this <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly okay Oh, and uh, the next thing is, uh, is about the color stuff. So you hear like uh, you can control the color, right? And uh, or if you wanted to do like uh, the realistic one, we have the, the PBR things. So you can also connect it to the PBR color. And uh, let me let me make the sphere inside the polo world, so you can see it as well. Uh, and uh, okay, let me make it like really cool. And uh, take it back to there. While oh, it's moving. Oh my God, it's moving. I saw like I didn't make the move because it's moving, but in the scene, it doesn't move. Oh my God. Uh -huh. It makes me panic a little bit. I'm saying like, what's wrong with this? Oh, oh, it was moving in the preview window, but it wasn't yeah, working. Yeah, yeah, that is the same. Okay, so the time things works okay i'm still good at it okay <laughs> <laughs> melody's the expert <laughs> so yeah i was panicking like oh what's wrong with this part let me just uh, take a look into that yeah okay so you will trying to just uh, make like uh, the y-axis working uh, at y uh, make it move along the y-axis so just uh, trying to add like uh, this uh timer variables with your like a uh, y output there so i think by doing this it should okay uh, it's probably like a too big mm, so let me see okay just add let's make experiment, it experiment we love that <laughs> Always, um, there is a question from our comment section. Um, always is asking, is it possible to trigger interactions with the camera distance to an object? Uh, actually, I that's a great question. I haven't really tried that, mm -hmm. but I think it's possible. Some people does that before. I think yeah, you should so be able to, or if not, you can mount the... Uh, 3D 
model like a, a random sm sphere with the camera so maybe you're not detecting where the camera is but you're detecting where the sphere is but they're like roped together and you can get the distance between your portal and the sphere i think yeah exactly so uh, or like another way is you can paint the position and uh, trying to like make the distance calculation between the position and your uh, the the object you wanted to like detect, so you're trying to like uh, there. I think there is a node called like a uh, distance. So you can see like using the distance node, trying to ping the camera position and get the position and your like uh, for example the the window frame, and uh, do the calculation there and see if the position is let me quickly sorry is this yeah something like this mm -hmm. yeah and if the distance is like less than the threshold something will happen yeah that could be the logic for that and uh, let me know if that works yeah <laughs> okay cool uh, so let me just put it back for there and uh, think. One second. What are you guys up to right now? Um, it is currently dinner time. It um where we are based, and I heard that um they are serving Thai food for dinner at the TikTok office. So. <laughs> a little sneak peek of what I'm about to have. I heard that they have like a really nice Thai salad, um, some pad Thai and stuff. So I'm excited and very hungry. Looking forward. Okay, so so actually you see like a, if I make like a, a moving, have a gentle movement with three dimensions, right? If you wanted to move, make it like a move just a one dimension, you can add a timer to make this variable there. So actually you see it's just moving along the Y axis. So here, this is the, at a timer. So it's always like a keep moving there. Yeah, that is for the position part. And uh, we can make it like a moving along with the all the uh, dimensions there. And I want to introduce you the magic part of the, the material thing. Uh, oh, sorry, about the, the color part. Okay, so now it's actually all like a white color, right? And uh, uh, we can, the magic things about material graph is you can try to use the screen dimension and uh, to make the, the color actually responding to the screen dimension. So. That's so fun. Like, I feel like I need to learn new things every day. Um, color with your screen dimension. Yeah, that's uh, the part that I always wanted to explore. So actually now uh, I'm trying to like uh, catching the screen dimension in X axis. And let's add some saturation, add some brightness. And you see, it's actually making like a rainbow color there. Okay, and uh, the cool thing is if you increase, I think like the maximum like number of the instance will be 1000. So you just need to like type in the number here and you will get like all these like <laughs> uh, instance of, of like objects there. Yeah. But if you want more object, because you're super fun, just duplicate your um, sphere and create another th uh, thousand instances. As many you want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As what you want there. Yeah. So you see, actually, like the color is changing along with the uh, screen chord. And another thing I wanted to introduce is so because in here, we just actually using this sphere model, right? And you can change in the shape of all the instance here. So maybe I can create it, change it to a head model. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a instantly be like all these models of head, or you can change it to like a plane. 
the reason why I want to change into play is we have another function uh, it called like uh, asset studio. Mm. So it's really helpful to create some like a texture for you. So for example, okay, we have a cheeseburger. Let's generate a cheeseburger. Come on, generate some cheeseburger. <laughs> okay, which one looks lovely? Which one looks... I like short? the first one. The buns look really good on the first no. one. Oh, oh my God, I feel hungry. Okay. Wait, guys, did you know that Um, I think two days ago was National Cheeseburger Day? So they are giving out free cheeseburgers. <laughs> what? Where? I Why I didn't know, know that? I think Burger Kill still has a promotion. So um, a couple days ago, I got a free cheeseburger um, for 50 cents or something or with oh one. So definitely go try it out. Her mentioning cheeseburger just reminded me. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. That, them, that's maybe next time they should ask us to do like effects like this to help them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Sponsor cool. us, Burger King. <laughs> Okay, now we have like a nice cheeseburg texture, right? And we have like a, all this like a plan. So we can try to apply the cheeseburg texture to them. Like uh, how to do that? Let's make like a texture uh, thing here in adding the texture coordinations to connect them together. And choose your cheeseburg texture and connect it here. Let's see. Yeah, we have hamburgers. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. I and, love our uh, portal going through a, a furry, furry head with thousand floating cheeseburgers. Yes. Let me like uh, scale it up. Okay, so now, but you see, it's kind of like not transparent. It's with the ugly background. So we can try to get that textures alpha and put it to the opacity here. That should solve the problem. Okay, it doesn't, why? Okay, okay, because here the blend mode is normal. So even you have the alpha channel, it will still do that. Let's trans to transparent. Okay, cool. Now we have like a hamburgers here and uh, we just create like a 10, sorry, 100 instance of the hamburger, like a floating around there. So I think with this material instance, uh, if you're trying to do like the flock of fish or something, you could just uh, like uh, all the butterfly, you know, you could just uh, like apply the, the butterfly or eh, wait, why I always keep just <laughs> Let's see a fish. Oh, let's see a fish. Okay. Oh, it looks lovely. Let's import a fish here. I'm going to say the assets that are being generated is super high quality. Like if I didn't know that they were AI generated, I would say like a designer did them. And that looks really cool. <laughs> yeah. So that is the magic things about uh, material instance. So if you wanted to do a, like a, a flock of fish, you probably need to create them like a one by one in this hierarchy. Right. But with material instance, you just need to like uh, type the number you want it here and it will instantly like changing the number. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is there any way to make that editable with visual scripting? Uh, yeah, we can do that. I think that's, kind of, you are just making like a template request. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because this kind of like a new feature. I'm not sure if it is in 3.1.0, but definitely in 3.2.0. And uh, actually, yeah, we are making a template trying to like uh, uh, expose some like uh, parameters for you to customize. So oh, it will be easier for you to so do in the, yeah, in the visual scripting. Like, uh, for example, we will expose the, the parameters so you can uh, change the texture there mm -hmm. and also like uh, try to control the scale of the like uh, each of the, I can say like an object or the particle mm -hmm. there, or like uh, you can tweak the, the motion of it. For example, now it's moving as a really random yeah, yeah. dimensions. Uh, you can just make them like a moving up, upside, oh, sorry, within up and down. Up yeah. And down. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So guys, keep an eye out for this new template. <laughs> it is obviously amazing. When it comes out, we'll do another live and said, hey, this was a template that Melody was talking about.
yeah cool and this is like a moving left and right yeah it's just uh so you see this is the, the we are for this output of this part we don't add the uh like a timer so it means the variable went changing along with time so you always fix and we fix the in the y and x uh y and d and we're just adding some like a um changing keep changing like a parameters for the x axis so that's why it's like a moving along the uh, x axis there yeah um Okay, cool. I think that's probably everything I wanted to present today. Mm -hmm. And uh, after you are done with your design, you can always like uh, feel to bring your device tracker back um, and really preview in like uh, in, in TikTok there. Yeah, in TikTok preview to get the sense of the, the uh, like a scale or like the dist distance between the camera and the real world there. This yeah. is perfect. Melody, thank you so much for this wonderful tutorial. We have some questions. Um, mm -hmm. Always is asking, um, are there any limitations on the size of the portal? Um, actually, I don't think so. There is a size limitation there, but like when you scale it too much, and uh, like, uh, for example, your camera can't really like uh, um, look at the floor. It probably lost the tracking a little bit or like uh, make your objects shaking a little bit. Yeah, because it's based on the like uh, airplane tracker. So sometimes if your object is too large, you probably get lost. Like, uh, oh my God, where should I like look at? And when your camera is just like uh, pointed to the sky or something, mm -hmm. it just loses tracking of the plan there yeah oh, okay i think you also inadvertently um answered their second question which was also what about plane tracking is the portal lost when the phone loses sight of the plane or it has some persistence so i think uh melody covered it you need a little bit of a plane in order to track it yeah exactly or if you are design another type of ar uh, effect, for example, just the things like uh, uh, floating around you. You don't need the, mm -hmm. the plan sensor. It always uh, like uh, tracking based on the or like use the plan as the anchor. Mm -hmm. Then it yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really great tip. If you don't want it to be dependent on the plane, you can um, use the camera look at component. So whenever a camera is pointing, it would always be pointed in that direction. So I think you can make it dependent on the camera. So the person who's turning on will always be able to see the portal, regardless of the plane tracking. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Hugh Vizel says, I would love to become an interactive engineer. What are the steps or programming languages do I have to take? Can you give little advice? <laughs> Uh, it depends on which company you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, like, uh, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just a uh, kidding. I mean, for like a uh, interactive engineer, um, but also like for different position you're trying to apply and it's the requirements probably they, they different. And I think the point is not about the language because no matter you're using JavaScript, Java, Unity or Unreal, all the things, uh, the logic or the knowledge behind it is the is the similar things, you know. So uh, I would say like uh, you can just uh, stick with using our effect house and trying to make all these great uh, interactions uh, you wanted. And uh, I would say like making some mini game uh, mm -hmm. with some like logic behind it is really great exercise. Mm -hmm. So as you are being confident with making like a uh, logic things. I think like uh, the, the tool wouldn't be a problem or block for you. Yeah. That is fantastic. And I am going to drop it in this slide for the very first time. I haven't announced it anywhere else. There might or might be another course soon that's teaching you the basics of visual scripting and making mini games. I don't know. But if you are interested, tune in for the announcement because it's coming soon. But I am very excited. Um, thank you for the answers. Everybody really enjoyed the live and the tutorials. Thank you, Melody, for the amazing tutorial. Yeah, it's really my pleasure. And I also have fun there. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad my like uh, live demo is working there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs>
And um, it seems like I did a poll earlier on, have you tried a portal template before? And 50% of the people said yes. Um, 50% of the people said no. So if you haven't tried the portal template yet, be sure to go on the Effect House um, program and try out the portal template. I feel like we gave a lot of fun ideas today. So I want to see your own spin on it. What theme would you make it in? Would you use plane tracker or would you use um, the device orientation? I don't know. Let us know. Or what kind of things are you adding with the instance material and stuff? Let us know. Melody, do you think you can save this file so we can share it to the live Discord? Uh, yeah, of course. I'll definitely share, share it. Amazing. So you'll be able to find the file on our Discord page as well. So if you haven't already, please join our Discord server. Thank you everyone for joining, especially like always and Sasha and Projo who are active in the chats and everyone from the TikTok live site as well. Hello from Indonesia here. Athman says, bye Athman. I hope everybody had a great rest of your day. Cool. Thanks, Ling. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.